today what we're gonna look at is the color page so if you're not there yet go ahead and click the color page at the bottom of your screen and it's gonna bring you to this page let's go ahead and reset this so that we're all looking at the same thing reset UI layout perfect so everyone should be looking at the same exact thing except for the footage of course in the Vintry Saw 14 so let's go from top again to bottom so top left you're gonna see the gallery page that's where you're gonna have all your stills so if we were to create a stills by right clicking grab a still it's gonna save that in your gallery page that's where all your stills are at we'll go over that again later um, if you untick that let's go to your timeline right here you can turn this on and off this is pretty much your timeline equivalent to your edit page you see that that's moving so I can scrub through the footage in a timeline usually you would want that on and the clips section is the thumbnail for your coloring for your clips so you can turn that off and on I always turn that on because it's easier to see what I am working on when it is on so that's the three right there looking at the right side of things top right are, is the nodes button nodes I'll talk about it a little bit more later again it's just a preview but pretty much this is your layers of color correction uh, to the right of that is the open effects tab which has all the DaVinci Resolve Studio um, effects now the free version might have some uh, watermark on them so just go over it if you have the free version but that is where you're gonna find all the effects for the Vinci Resolve 14 lightbox is kind of just like another media viewer thing so I don't really deal with that as much okay so if you look to your left again underneath this percent sign um, you're gonna see your image wipe uh, your split screen and your highlight and then uh, let's see I'll make sure we're not missing anything right here is just your typical um, arrow and this hand here so you can kind of move your your node view here which if you have a mouse that has a scroll wheel you can just press that as well and it'll do the same exact thing now to the right of that is your bypass grade so that means if you let's just say let's grade this if you click on this you're gonna see the before and if you untick it you will see the after um, over here is this, your clip view and this is your timeline view meaning all the nodes right here is only gonna affect the clip but if you click to your timeline the entire timeline I'm gonna create a new serial here so I'm gonna do Alt S I'm gonna show you what I mean so in the timeline if you have a node and you let's say crush the darkness it's gonna affect the entire timeline of your project but if I undo this and if I go to the clip and do the same exact correction it's only gonna it's only gonna affect that clip so yeah I hope that makes sense and you can also change it here clip and timeline it's the same exact thing and this right here is just kind of uh, zooming in and out and like I said if you have a mouse button you can hold alt and you should be able to scroll in and out as well moving to the right oh, that's fine you can mess with that as well I don't really use that uh, down here you're gonna see your qualifier window your power window image white dust removal open effects overlay and color chart if you are using like a x right color checker you're gonna find all that stuff here and the qualifiers and stuff like that um, you're gonna find that here I just made something there let's control Z um, turn that off uh, unmix I don't really use that and the mute button is right here as well so if you want to turn the audio off if you don't want to you want it if you don't want it making any noise while you're coloring you can do that as well okay so moving on to the bottom this is where all the good stuff are at so let's go ahead and reset this by clicking this here so over here on the left side this is where you're going to decode in the bearer if you're shooting raw I am not shooting raw this is a GH5 footage log so I don't have any of these available but if you have black magic cameras that shoot raw area Lexus red cameras you're gonna be able to debare your footage right here uh, over here is the color checker like I said earlier if you have a color checker on the screen you can accurately check the color for you automatically uh, the venture resolve is going to do some mathematic stuff you can change your source you can change your target your color space and you can mess around with the color temperature if it's off but basically if you have a x-right color checker on this shot here 
and you have it facing the camera, I can set that up like that, match it, and it's gonna color correct it um, automatically for you. I don't use that, but if you guys are interested to see how that works, just let me know. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And moving on to the next, and this is the, this is the deal right here, is the lift, gamma, gain, and offset. You're gonna use this a lot when coloring. So lift is obviously gonna affect the gamma, gamma mids, highlights and offset is the whole entire thing. So let's reset that. Uh, if you can switch it to primary bars, you can do the same exact thing as well. Lift gamma gain offset, but also you can adjust your Y, red, G, B, if you're trying to match colors and whatnot. But you're removing, adding color in your lift, gamma gain and offset. Offset is the whole entire, pretty much all three of these put together. So if I'm adding blue, I'm adding blue to all the lift gamma gain. Uh, but yeah, this is just preview. Again, we're just going over this. Now, if you click here, it's gonna give you to the log, okay? And like I said, you can use the drop downs as well, primary wheels log. Now for log, if you're shooting a log image, you're gonna be using this here. And uh, we'll make a tutorial about that as well. It's a whole different level. I'm just giving you guys the, uh, the page and giving you, pretty much showing you where everything is right now. So just hang tight, we'll get there. Moving on to this button here, you'll see the little tri color, whatever. This is another way of boosting and decreasing color in each channel, red, uh, green, blue. So yeah, I, I mainly use this for adding saturation and that's pretty much what I use it for. Okay, next thing is motion effects, noise reduction. Now, if you are using a free version of the uh, DaVinci Resolve, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have this, but the Vinci Resolve has a really, really good um, noise reduction built in into it, and we will go over it again later. So that's, uh, oh, sorry, let's go back to the color again. I don't think I went over what's down here. So auto balance, you can auto balance your footage now by clicking a eyedropper into a gray card or something like that, which that's pretty awesome. I really wanted that in the Vinci Resolve, but now they actually implemented it. I don't know when, but yeah, it's there now. Um, uh, let's see, in page one, you're gonna see contrast adjustments. You're gonna see the pivot, and you're gonna see um, L uh, the low range, high range, saturation, and U. Pretty cool stuff. If you change it to page two, you're gonna see temperature change, which is awesome. Tint, um, which one is mid? Oh, so sharpness or blurriness. I forgot what MD stands for, brain fart. It's like 12 a.m. so. But yeah, it just pretty much sharpens your image and then low, um, it, it's dealing with your mid mids, I'm pretty sure. So uh, left is blurry, right is sharp in the mids. Col color boost is kind of like vibrance. It increases your color for you. Uh, shadow, see, same thing. It's just highlights, same thing. That, wow, that looks like an HDR shot. Holy crap, I was just messing around and it ended up like that. So that's the page two of that. So moving on to the bottom middle of the color page. And hang in there, guys. There's a lot of stuff to talk about because this is, this is it. This page is the reason why DaVinci Resolve is really amazing. So. Curves layer is similarly how you would do curves in Photoshop, After Effects, everything. You can add marks, remove marks, and whatnot. Uh, in the curves, you can also do U versus U, U versus saturation, uh, U versus LUM, LUM versus SAT, and SAT versus SAT. My favorite one out of this is luminance versus saturation. So let's go ahead and reset this mess here. So basically, just a preview, I would, if I want my blacks to be blacks, I'm gonna have a tick right here and just dra pretty much desaturate the lower end of my footage. Just a little preview there. That's a really cool tool. I use it all the time. Um, if you go here, this is kind of like your qualifier for secondary. You can change your use, saturation, luminance, and you just pretty much click there. And this is automatically gonna change to qualifier. So that's pretty cool. It's gonna select, it's kind of like keying. Think of it, think of it as green screening. That's what this qualifier is, is for. You can um, pick, you can remove, you can add, you can feather, and then you can invert as well. And then you can refine your mat by, you know, 
pretty much click green screen, black light, white click, clean black, blur radius, and whatnot. So yeah, and you can also change this option right here, by the way, to HSL, RGB luminance in new 3D. Well, it's not new, they've had it, but that 3D one is really good if you're having issues keying HSL or RGB. Moving on to this is the window panel. This is where you create all your masking, which is really helpful for secondaries again. And on top of that, you can actually track masks. So let's just do that right now. Just tracking and, you know, just tracking it. You see how she's tracking? That's really cool, right? That's amazing. It's doing it for you. You can track windows in the Vinci Resolve. Yeah, you can have a lot of different shapes and you can have a custom shape as well if you want to do that which is really helpful for secondary when you're trying to really precisely uh, hone something like a face or something and you're trying to change a color of that that's awesome Ooh, let's get out of there um, let's go ahead and reset this um, let's see so turn this on again and you're gonna see the transform sizes aspect tilt pan rotate and opacity and you can also change the softness of your mask to feather it just a little bit. All right, moving on to the right, I already showed it to you, is the tracker controls. You can have window stabilizer, if you're trying to stabilize the footage, and FX, if you have FX plugins. So, or yeah, if you're using FX plugins, sorry. Pan, tilt, zoom, rotate. It just, it's up to you, you can customize. You don't have to use all of them if you're trying to uh, stabilize something or track something you can turn uh, one of one of them off or all of them off except for 3d or something like that you're gonna have to mess around if you're not getting good quality or if you're not happy with your results uh, frame clipping and frame frame by frame is kind of like frame by frame tracking and clip is like the whole thing so let's say we track this the whole way and we weren't happy we would switch it to frame and then we would frame by framely, that's not even a word, frame by framely uh, track the footage for us. So moving on right here is the point tracker, cloud tracker. You do have an option for that if you want to use a bunch of trackers or just point kind of like the old After Effects tracker controls. So let's see if I'm forgetting anything in here. Right here you can reset your track, clear, delete, short track, copy tra track data and paste track data. Now if you have stabilizer, you can also see the classic stabilizer if you're not happy with the new one, which is pretty cool. Now for this one, you just click stabilize and it's gonna stabilize the whole thing. If you use the classic one, you're gonna have to press play throughout the whole thing and then stabilize, just a little preview. Um, moving on to the next page, this is your blur and sharpen. So for radius, if you go up, it's gonna be blurry. If you go down, it's gonna be really freaking sharp. So you can use this for sharpening. Just be careful, because it's super freaking strong. I don't really use these here. And the scaling, I don't really mess around with this. Yeah, see, it's grayed out. I don't even mess with that. But you can do blur, sharpen, or mist. I think that's what the, the thing was, is sharpen and mist. You can turn the scaling up. Oh, gosh. That's pretty crazy. That's too much. So let's see, and mix is kind of like your opacity layer. If you lower it down, it's gonna get rid of the effect for you. Uh, moving on to the right side is key. Basically what this is, is kind of like an opacity layer again. So let's say, let's control uh, Alt S, we're gonna create a new layer. The key output if, let's say we add a blue tint to this, right? If you do key output to zero, you're just changing the opacity of that, and that's what I use it for. When I want a correction that is too strong, if I have to tone it down, I would use this key to tone that down by just using using this slider here. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's reset that, I'm gonna delete this. Moving on to the right one is your sizing. I don't really mess with this that much, guys, but just mess around with it. You just get to move your footage around and uh, you have your you have your input and your output sizing just be careful I mean, I mean you can do the crop bars like this way but I don't do it that way so I don't really mess around with this that much uh, let's see moving on node sizing and reference sizing just mess around with that but it has something to do with the way your footage is gonna look like afterwards now 
clicking on 3D. I can't click on 3D. Mm, weird. But let's see if I'm forgetting anything here. Oh, yeah, of course. So right here is your keyframes, and right here is your scopes. Scopes, scopes, man, you can't go wrong with the scopes. Now, if you want to remove that, there you go. You can move it around. If you have a second monitor, just whip it to the second monitor. But scopes, man, that is, oh, you definitely need this when you're color correcting. It's amazing. You can have single, double, or all four of them all at the same time. Uh, you can reset the view, show reference levels, and you can change that too if you want. I leave it at default because I don't mess with that stuff. You can do RGB. You can also do Y only, which is good. Okay. So I'm trying to think and make sure we did not forget anything in this page. I'm pretty sure that is everything in the color page. If you have any questions, let me know. And I know that took forever, but thanks for watching.